Okay, well, it looks like we're live. So welcome to our Red Feather Mind, Body, Spirit Facebook Live event. I'm Christopher McClure. And today we have a wonderful guest, uh, celebrity creator, Miriam Jacobs. Uh, Miriam, Miriam is most recently the creator of Tarot in Motion, a handbook to embody the wisdom through the cards. And we wanted to catch up, up today to learn more about this fascinating book and how to use it and what's ahead. But first, a little background on Miriam. Uh, Miriam Jacobs is a San Francisco Bay Area healer and dance enthusiast who's been reading tarot for over 30 years. That's not possible. That's, yeah, you're too young to back. Uh, but anyway, so after a successful career as a visual artist in New York, Miriam found herself drawn to the healing arts. In 1994, she began formal training as it was a certified polarity therapy. I do want to talk about that a little bit more polarity therapy. Um, in uh, 1996, Mary moved to California uh, to continue her healing arts studies and open a private practice. As creator of Polarity Wellness Tarot and the author of Tarot and the Chakras, uh, Miriam synchronizes several healing techniques uh, systems with Tarot to bring our experience uh, to, of ourselves to heighten consciousness. Miriam now uses cards to support others to create uh, cathartic movement pieces, Tarot in motion. Uh, she focuses on self, uh, safe share, process, and having fun. Uh, so we were having a great discussion earlier um, about this book. I was trying to continue. I kept saying, I kept saying, oh, I want to talk about this. Like, no, I gotta wait. Oh, I gotta talk about this. I want to wait. So now we can talk <laughs> more about uh, about the book itself. It's wonderful to have you here. As we were talking about, we met each other at the tar at the uh, Bay Area Tarot Symposium. You're on the Bay Area now. Um, that's and so um, it, was a, it was a wonderful show. Hopefully, we'll come back someday. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so here we are with um, with. Tarot in motion, and I really think this this uh, kind of changes the game uh, for how we approach uh, the tarot. So I always like to hear about kind of like the stories behind uh, journeys. So uh, how did you get into uh, tarot originally? What's your what's your story? Well, I am trained as an artist, and I worked in a nonprofit art organization called Lower East Side Print Shop in New York, mm -hmm. and I was developing an intolerance to the fumes. I also mm -hmm. have a, um, I've always been really intuitive. And so in order to seek answers about my health and where my career was going, I picked up tarot. I had a friend mm -hmm. who taught me some tarot. I got a gift as a tarot card, as a as a deck. My first deck was the Pisanti yeah. Pesaurus deck. And, uh, and it just like, led from there i had done i was doing readings for friends and it just eventually evolved and then when i was i was teaching art for a long time and making art and i um was leaving that job and just found polarity therapy and i decided mm -hmm. to study that and um and t polarity is based on universal elements and tarot is and i was just like wait a second, you know, there's, there's got to be a connection there. Yeah, uh -huh. I guess synchronicity there together. And, yeah. and the connection is, is the universal elements. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. in polarity or in elements, it's, it's ether, air, fire, water, earth. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is then after I finished my polarity training, I, um, I got this like, message from an old healer of mine who um, who just said move to California. So I have a family here and I uh, I got up and moved, you know, out of my loft in lower Manhattan and moved to the Bay Area where I opened up a practice and continued to study and realizing that polarity is like this umbrella for lots of things and is based on Ayurveda. So I started studying some Ayurveda and mm -hmm. some other different touch therapies and realized that when I was giving sessions that I was pulling some cards beforehand mm -hmm. because the area, you know, like in California, the, the earth moves, you know, and so it's airy. So mm -hmm. I felt like I had to like, ground people mm -hmm. and sometimes to ground people you have to like get them out of their heads so the tarot ended up being like this really great tool to like sort of solve some of those thought problems or issues or or at least give some confirmation or set in a direction so that i could do the body work mm -hmm. a lot easier 
-hmm. And then I just kept looking at them, you know, unlike the kind of learner that it's not like I'm going to read something and it's I'm going to remember it or even completely that I'm going to look at a tarot card and know what it means. It's kind of between that. I like to say that I learn things and do things in a collage mode. And so I like, but what really helps to learn is, is to make charts. So tarot and the chakras end up being a lot about charts. And so anyway, I decided to make a deck that related. So, um, polarity wellness tarot which are these you know funky collages i'm not an illustrator so i um you know i've always done collages and um and my artwork was non-silver photos so that just led to me doing the deck and i queried it with schiffer and at the time um dino was um was running that department and she mm -hmm. kept getting back to me like, well, we're really not sure we're going to have a meeting and this and that. And finally she said, well, we're not going to do the deck, but Peter wants you to do this book on tarot and the chakras. And he really likes this, like this little man in the corner. And so, um, so I set about writing tarot and the chakras. And so that's where I, I integrate or synthesize different systems because that's what I learned from the charts mm -hmm. and, and comparing and contrasting mm -hmm. different things. And uh, after that came out, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to still integrate it to the body. Mm -hmm. So my tarot readings kind of became polarity therapy sessions mm -hmm. and my, um, but yet, which also polarity therapy can be exercise related. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the founder, Dr. Randolph Stone, had mm -hmm. yoga type exercises that related to parts of the body. Mm -hmm. So I decided to use that. What happened was I was thinking of doing it in yoga and mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not a yoga teacher. And I also have always loved dance. And so I started seeing dance when I lived in Manhattan mm -hmm. and um, and it just kind of led from there is just to make it so that people could make movement things and pull the tarot more into their bodies. It like all of tarot in motion is like, you know, it's articulating what I already knew. And mm -hmm. so um you know, it was articulating or I felt like like all of this stuff is it's like it's channeled from mm -hmm. you know, from the divine. If that's anything, I'm kind of like I'm, I feel like I'm really spiritual, but that mm -hmm. really I um, I'm also pretty grounded. Maybe it was all those years of li living in New York or something. I'm not really sure, but I mm -hmm. think I decided to write the book to share this with with others so to go back a bit i started having um tarot in motion classes mm -hmm. so and at the time i called it dancing the tarot and the person who ran the studio said you know it's really not dancing necessarily it's movement and you don't want to discourage people and so at the time I started just studying a lot, I started going to a lot of somatic dances and somatic is it's mm -hmm. like, for, you know, somatic dances for anyone who wants to move. Mm -hmm. And out in the Bay Area, I had the pleasure of, of taking classes with probably the mother of, of somatic dance, Anna Halpern, who is, um, is, no longer with us, but she wanted to make dance healing. And in one of her classes, she said, it becomes dance when you can feel it in their body. Mm -hmm. So I realized that there was this, you know, so at the time I kept, you know, it, it the, the whole process just evolved. But I also realized that a lot of the somatic dance was just like, it was releasing but yet with dance, it's like, it's such a great place to express whatever you feel mm -hmm. at the time. Like you can be angry where you can't always just get anger. So you can kind of act yeah. out. Right. <laughs> and, um, 
And so, and it's a great way to release. And then with a lot of the um, live classes, what happens is, is that then you have a, a live or even at this point, the Zoom classes that happens with too. What you can do is you can have this, um, you have a witness. And one thing that I learned from my polarity training is, well, the main thing is, is to be present. Mm -hmm. and, and to mm -hmm. connect with whatever vibration someone has. But mm -hmm. polarity therapy has this structure that follows. And mm -hmm. then there's also the dance that has it. And then if you get to witness, you get to be seen and that validates it. So. Wow. Yes, definitely. Um, that's, uh, there's so many fascinating things in that and what, what you've told, <laughs> told us there. Um, the polarity therapy um, is, it sounds as though, I mean, we could talk about maybe just, uh, you know, a more intensive book on uh, <clears throat> polarity therapy, you and I, but um, I like that, um, you know, the evolution from the tarot and the chakras, you know, because um, that is, you know, um, a precursor almost, you know, to this. And then this is like tarot and the chakras, you know, magnify, you know, in so many different forms, really. I think it's an evolution you know, of that and the other, that other book is actually award-winning too. It's a, it's a visionary award-winning book, um, Miriam's Terra and Chakras. So, uh, but this, yeah, this, this just uh, takes it to a whole other level and incorporates so many different things in this. It's, it's a, it's it for a relatively compact book. There are so many good things in here. And we talked a little bit earlier about them. Um, even if someone is in, intimidated by, you know, like, oh, I don't want to dance. I want to move, whatever. Um, just the meanings alone of the cards in here are fantastic. I think just, just for someone who wants to understand about the cards and if they're not ready to move, you know, once they understand more about the cards, then they can, you know, incorporate the movement into, um, their, their work and understanding and embody the cards as, as, as the, uh, <clears throat> subtitle says too, there's a, right in the beginning, there's a wonderful passage here, um, that if you don't mind me quoting from the book, um, it's uh, restrictive, <laughs> restrictive problems on physical, mental, and emotional levels are more clearly seen and unwound. Tarot emotion takes the message of the tarot a step further than tarot alone by helping you get present and mindful in your body while embracing the awareness presented in the cards you've pulled. And so I think that really embodies it. And it really is, you know, very simple as much as having the intention and pulling, interpreting the card and then creating the dance. And I think what's really great is this how, you know, throughout the book, it just moves so systematically and so well. I mean, okay, to get maybe abstract, the book, the book itself is a dance. Uh, because, you know, because you're starting off and it, and it gains ga it gains momentum as you go through the book. It has its own kind of rhythm. It's really it's quite fascinating if you, if you if you go through it, you know, um, chapter by chapter. And it's, you know, very thorough about different ways you can do it. Uh, solo, in a mirror, in groups, for holidays, for a variety of different, um, you know, uh, times and, and, and ways. And, uh, yeah, so, and then even, so I mean, there's this, there's, there's, this could be like a, a five hour conversation or, you know, a week long conversation, <laughs> I think, really. So um, and you kind of said what what really inspired you to uh, to create it. Um, I love how you, you know, tie it back into um, some well-known dance luminaries, you know, too. Um, the, the Cunningham Cage um, inspiration that you had way back in, in Manhattan, I think you were saying in the book about um, how that really made you look at uh, music and dance and different movement. In a different way too and i think it's really inspirational for anyone who wants to uh, tie this into um, how modern dance has evolved and it's this is a compliment to anyone who really appreciates dancing appreciates tarot appreciates astrology or all those other kind of things um as well too so i guess really what really did you enjoy most about bringing this together what really got you going about about uh, bringing the uh, book together you know, I am so grateful that I get to be creative. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing and that I could create something new. I remember before I moved to California, it was just like the week before I was walking in Soho with a friend and it was one of these like really gorgeous fall days. Mm -hmm. And my friend ran into someone she knew who was a psychic who said, oh, do a reading for Miriam. Just, she's about to move. And this woman said, oh, she's gonna create something new. And it was like, what? 
like you know so this is something that evolved and so this is kind of confirmation on that mm -hmm. and what i enjoy most is is that i can share my my work with others that mm -hmm. the, the that the book along with the um virtual zoom meetings which i had to go to after the pandemic can bring it to more people mm -hmm. and so my intention is 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 that this can go further you know i'm not going to lie i'm not a trained dancer but this could be the basis for meaningful choreography or people can take it in different ways people can also like learn tarot in from yeah. this like you know as as you as you just mentioned but yeah. they can also learn tarot for you know i had someone in a class who i i had met at a networking event and we connected mm -hmm. into a, a live class she had never even looked at the tarot and so by the time she was was finished with the class she was already or, or maybe it was her second class she was already able to get into the energy of the tarot and start reading it i think for um avid readers what it does is it brings it more into the body like i remember the, the bat conference that you mentioned there was someone there who was a you know a a, a big um a, you know a, a big personality in the um tarot world and i was showing him my cards and he just looked at me and he's like i don't want to take tarot into my body <laughs> <laughs> well oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I'll I'll hold the rest of my judgments on that. Sure. But um, I I just wanted another way to look at it, and also, you know, like I said, th this is like another way of doing a polarity session. It's another way of bringing us more present in our in our bodies, or a way where whether it's alone, whether it's a a one-on-one, -on -one, whether someone's doing it in the mirror, there's something that they can find. You know, there was one time when I was first developing this and I was about to go to this networking event and I really wanted to go because the person who was running it, I was I was really fond of and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, how am I ever gonna get through this? Mm -hmm. And so I pulled a card and I looked at it. I think it was like the, um, the king of, of water and so i was kind of like looking at those symbols mm -hmm. so those symbols on the top of their card just, mm -hmm. and i created a dance and i just got a deeper meaning for that card in in general and a deeper meaning of why i wanted to go or it, it kind of changed my intention mm -hmm. yeah um it, that's fascinating that how it evolved really and you talk about the uh, different components. So let's talk a little bit about um, how each card is kind of broken down because it's, it's very clear uh, and there's a, there's a very uh, it's a system that we kind of you kind of developed here for each card and it goes into um, several different things. It's I think it's like six or seven different categories um, that we kind of break down and and so essentially it goes to um, to the card meaning. So each each card. Um, within, as it's described, has a breakdown of, of different aspects, and um, they're they're kind of like uh, aspects to generate a movement material. So it's just material that someone can kind of start with and then go from. If, I, if I'm interpreting it correctly, so these are you know ways um, of being inspired by a particular card and a particular movement or inspiration. So it's it's really multi level. So it goes into the, the so for each card you have the card meaning. The expressive movements or the qualities uh, you have a uh, pace you have like three different paces basically um you have the chakra it's associated with um and the an anatomical focus and then the astrological sign um and the reference as well too so it really goes into a lot of different um, aspects there which is why i say kind of it takes tarot and chakras you know beyond so chakras are in there <laughs> but also have you have all these other elements too and you, you mentioned the uh the classical elements plus you know ether there, the container uh, of the elements too, and so that's important. And um, and so for it, each card, I can hold on, hold on my book here. Each card so, has this. Yes. 
I'm just going to interrupt. So you can use any of those. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's very clear. So you says, can use any of them or you can use all of them. And what I find in either in both the live and in the um, the virtual classes that mm -hmm. that kind of evolves. But mm -hmm. this gives you a place to start. Plus, you know, we all need structure. You know, when when you, you know, write a book, you know, and of course I cheat on this a little bit, is it's like, you know, you you have an outline and then you have a beginning, you have a middle and the end. And that's because you want people to um to understand it. So those structures and because they relate to the tarot and they relate to polarity therapy. Like mm -hmm. if you remember in um, tarot and the chakras, all of those things kind of was kind of focused on um, on self healing or for mm -hmm. healers to have something to go by, which is then again is based on polarity therapy. Which you know, mm -hmm. give me a week and I'll just touch what you know how how rich that therapeutic mm -hmm. model is. Right. Yeah. But um, this this is a place for um, for people to start and movements, and then the mm -hmm. classes themselves evolve. Like you know, what I did is I you know people know of dance to music, mm -hmm. and what happened is, and and this is where I realized this stuff goes way back before living in New York and working at Lower East Side Print Shop and knowing. You know, I was intuitive and reading cards. It kind of goes back to even watching dance, you know, mm -hmm. or our movement or wanting to, you know, dance with my my hippie friends in high school, you mm -hmm. know, in the woods or something. <laughs> and, you know, and, and goes back to, you know, one of the first dances that I saw it was Merce Cunningham and Merce did work with John Cage. And mm -hmm. at the time I just went because Robert Rauschenberg, who was one of my favorite artists did the oh, set. Okay. And it was like, mm -hmm. Oh, this is sort of cool. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, but yet, and I didn't understand that at all, but you know, it kept me going to seeing dance mm -hmm. along with, you know, doing posters at Lower East Side print shop of, of, of performances that um, that were kind of like um, grassroots that mm -hmm. I got to see a lot. But in that particular performance, until I later researched it, I didn't realize that what John Cage did with his his sound was not for the dance or the dance wasn't to the music, but it was like mm -hmm. together with the music. It was at the same time. And I realized that when I was doing tarot in, in motion, that mm -hmm. I like to have ambient sound. So back collaging back to the classes, there's times where I think the class and anyone who's taught a class on a regular basis knows that, you know, that it evolves and it evolves. Sometimes there's, you know, there's someone who then plays music for that exact dance or the quality or the quality of the element people could choose that or for mm -hmm. a while people were like really costuming up you know and when i first started everyone had these um these these um scarves oh, they were doing okay and then someone, right you know someone came into the class and did something completely different or in one of the zoom class it was someone who wasn't comfortable with movement and she does all these amazing movements with her hands, mm -hmm. you know, and that is, you know, it becomes dance when you can feel it in your body. Right. And that's, and that's how that person would have been, you know, embodying the cars and everyone's going to embody that differently. And that's why I love the, how you give this framework for, for a jumping off point uh, for, you know, for each of the cars. And then even then you go into um, spreads uh, then as well, which is a whole different, aspect um i was trying to try to, to understand the, the complexity of a dance that for a spread like the celtic cross i mean my goodness that would be a heck of a dance <laughs> you know for, versus just uh you know one car two cars um so uh so yes yeah, so, but it can build on um where where somewhere wherever someone's comfortable um into some more complex movements even in the whole aspect of you know um, you know, spreads as well, which is really quite fascinating. So I did want to just you know, kind of highlight there if, if I can show real fast, you know, as for each of the uh, the cards then here too, we have these, this key, 
up top that just kind of shows for all of the different elements goes down goes to astrological astrological symbols into the um the uh the different elements the different uh, movements and things for every every card uh within there as well so it's very clear very straightforward um and with and very very visually engaging too that's why i say it is kind of has its own movement as well too the the colors throughout it are, are beautiful i think and we made some good choices there um so then going into spreads so how does that work how, how do the spreads work <laughs> Um, you know, so, uh, so dancing a, a spread, it's, it, it could be one card and then another, or it could be whatever card highlights. And, you know, even when people make their dance, like I like to give people time to do this online, it's a little mm -hmm. less time that mm -hmm. people have mm -hmm. than live classes, but it's sort of up to them. And then they also learn, this is how I do it for a um, performative dance. It can be their window in on choreographing themselves or to get them out of what they're used to. And so I would say that that really depends on who you are and how you want that to be. Could it be that one movement moves into the next movement, into the right. next, and do you just take the pace and change the pace, or you take the meaning of the card mm -hmm. and the meaning of the card, because that's just going to give you intention. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. You know, and then does that intention evolve, or does one stand out? Like what I notice is a, that there's some people who just get up and go for it. Like they take one of those um, those cues and go for it, whether it's one card or a few cards and see what happens. You know, like in this last class that I did for, um, which was on Zoom, which was for the seasons, you know, mm -hmm. and it was um, the equinox. So the equinox is balanced. So there's a, a question that gets asked that sort of, you know, gets in touch with the holidays, get in touch with the power of of what's going on in the universe. But in that particular class, like let's find two things that you have to balance. So then there's people who know exactly what they're going to do. There's some people who just go for it. And then there's people like me who I have some idea. And if I get up there, whether it's in front of the class or in front mm -hmm. of a screen, I'm gonna do, um, I have some idea what I'm gonna do, but when I'm there and, mm -hmm people are watching me, however that is, it's, it's like um, it changes mm -hmm. and it evolves as I do it because mm -hmm. as you're doing the movement, because, you know, there's also, there's, there's tons of people who say that, you know, dance is like, is the, you know, it, it's the art that everybody relates to. However, you know, you go and you see dance and, mm -hmm. and the performative and your mind goes someplace else or or if it does have content behind it, you know, if a dance has content behind mm -hmm. it, it's going to um, it's going to reach more people. You know, not that they consciously know that. And the, the same with our the same with tarot. The reason why, you know, you're in the business that you're doing is whether consciously or not, you know that this universal system has like dozens of ways that it can be interpreted. But yet it's still the same foundation. I don't know if that answered your question or not. Okay, I can't hear you. You know, so here we are, we have some technical glitches, but you know, Mercury in retrograde, what is it that you could connect to? No, it, it did. You know, uh, yes, it answered several questions, actually. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> It's very efficient. Um, oh, you can't hear me? I'm sorry. Um, well, we're nothing's changed on my end. Uh, I can't say. Yeah, so I, I don't know if people can hear or not. They can't. Okay. 
can you connect to? Can you hear me now? Okay, now I can. So um, I'm going to continue then as far as what we have uh, right now for, uh, yeah, with, with the, yeah, yes, they can, and they can hear you. Um, so uh, we might have to uh, cut our, oh, great, wonderful. Okay, all right. So let, that's good, because I, I was sure we could talk about that. Um, as you were talking about dance in general, um, something struck me about the relation between, um, you know, this kind of movement and uh, <clears throat> Tai Chi. Tai Chi or a Qigong or um, areas of moving meditation too that have been around for you know centuries and so uh, so this is kind of like I, I want to say this is kind of almost in that tradition too of a way of you know embodying um, some kind of you know inspiration centering you know it's all kind of connected you know together you know tarot can be um, interpreted and approached in different ways and that's what we were talking about before um, <clears throat> we went live here about um, yeah bringing things into the into the space here that are different that are going to help people to approach the tower in a different way. And that's what this, this one of the reasons I was so excited to bring this book in, uh, because it really does approach tarot in a groundbreaking way, I think, you know, um, and again, like I said, and you don't have to, um, necessarily use the movements, you know, within this or do, do, you know, all the parts that are, that are listed in here, but whatever you're comfortable with, even if it's just learning about the cars and their relation to, um, the different elements and all those, um, aspects are just fascinating, uh, really, for, for me and I think for anybody who has an interest in tarot um, as well, too. Now, for yourself, do you um, read tarot often outside of dancing it? Do you actually read it often? Yourself? I, I read tarot often for myself and for others. <laughs> um, again, like okay. in my um, collage mode fashion, I wouldn't say that <laughs> every day I wake up and read or pull a couple cards from either my deck or someone else's. But, you know, if I think about it, I probably will will pull cards every day. I don't think everybody has to do that. In fact, I think that the cards are set up so that they're going to tell you when they're getting too much. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a way sometimes just to confirm what um what's going on for me or i loved and i put this on my instagram page um that i that i pulled a card from another deck of someone who's a student of mine and the deck is the matrix of light and i pulled the for what's going to happen today you know mm -hmm. what's going to happen for this and i got the 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 ten of cups so that right. satiation. So, you know, and, and what I, I have to admit is, is like I, I started to dance around, you know, and some of it was more, you know, the most important is dancing that meaning to that card. And, and you know, I'm not the only person who's dancing to the tarot or making meanings of those, those cards or perhaps mm -hmm. in a lot of decks, those mm -hmm. pictures of how they relate to it. But... I'm bringing in the system and I'm bringing in again what I know as a um, as a healing arts practitioner. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I, I, you said you touched on something there about the cars themselves and the cars telling you um, when it's time. I have heard this over and over again about developing a relationship with the cards, too, which I think is just, you know, really, really interesting uh, that um, and it's going to be different per person. Um, as every aspect of a tarot, using the tarot emotion is going to be different for each person too. So to that to that end, I wanted to see if we, if we could do an interpretation of uh, of a card here to see you know what's you know what we pull and um, and what uh, what the book says here too. So now I I brought a deck. You have your you have your parallelity tarot. You do both. Oh, let's just put them together. I'm going to look in the book because usually if I use my cards, I know what the symbols are. But I'm okay. going to. As you're pulling a card. I don't remember all of them. Some of them oh, I remember. Yeah, no, I, mean, <laughs> I completely understand. That's great. All right. So I'm using. Are you uh, dance for us, Chris? I am not, not today. Maybe we'll after. We'll see. We'll have, to, we'll have to, you know, maybe put a. Uh, yeah, we'll think about that one. Uh, but so I'm using uh, the Byzantine Tarot. This is John Matthews' uh, Byzantine uh, Tarot. So we're going to pull a card here. I will do a standard shuffle here. Okay. Okay. So let's see what we're pulling. And we are pulling the page of coins, the page of coins. So 
everyone can see this from there. Okay, so the page of coin, and again, I have like in this book, I have really concise meanings. So yes. you can bounce off of that. I mean, Red Feathers has like dozens of brilliant books that have, you know, really in-depth meanings. So if you want to go for that, or for me, the page, Earth, the, um, and I call it the page of Earth. Yes, exactly. Um, pages represents another person who's influencing you. So we mm -hmm. know that that's like a, possibly a young person and in mm -hmm. this who's in who's being contemplative and gaining knowledge from reading books mm -hmm. he or she is a hard-working student so mm -hmm. and whatever else you want to add to that mm -hmm. and so movement qualities it's earth on earth so my interpretation of pages is is that they're earth not mm -hmm. some people think it's air whatever you want to fit in so it's really grounding so you're going to do this pace the pace because it's going to be really slow so maybe when when you know you can do some of it and for whatever that card means for you and then perhaps the movement's going to come more from your lower pelvis for me all of the um all of the court cards are the polarity polarity therapy has this astrological component and um body components so it's it's taurus neck and it's virgo colon and it's capricorn knees so all of the pages are those so perhaps the movement can come from one of them more specifically you know mm -hmm. your lower abdomen or perhaps your root chakra so mm -hmm. some of the movements can undulate from that or mm -hmm. some of it can be like okay how are you going to go about your your day mm -hmm. you know and then what i put in this is um an intention so the intention is going to vary but these last two things of intention and suggested movements or props mm -hmm. I, I just had fun with yeah and this That's is really true. fun so you know for you the intention of the rest of your day will be you will reap the rewards of your efforts Mm -hmm. I will, re you know, and so you can say that or, you know, or forget about it. And then at the end of the day, go, oh, that was it. And then perhaps in book, you know, you can use books as your props. So again, yeah. that's just being really mm -hmm. silly. I think, I think I pulled the right card really. We've got, got a couple of those around here. Um, so um, <laughs> that's fascinating how it all, the synchronicity of that, even that that's the card that came up and it's books and uh, um, really very cool. Very cool. And then add that with a, you know, other card, maybe, boy, there's just so much you can go with that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll think about, I, I like the idea that, that, it, that it be a slow pace, uh, the dance. Uh, that's a good thing <clears throat> in my case. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, and it's actually a great jumping off point and extremely clear too, as you said, to just move right through uh, each of the elements. And it's a kind of a framework to begin with, if you want to embody these cards, uh, you know, better too and then really learn them and and uh with any deck of your choice so then that'd be a, a specific deck either it could be whatever deck you're comfortable with everyone have has decks that uh, resonate with them more than others and you know the, whichever one that would be is is just fine for this uh for this system so um so what lies ahead for you what's what's next for for miriam what's 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 coming up what i want to do is i want to um continue doing these classes i want to use tarot in motion for I want I want to create a longer class which was kind of in the works before the pandemic happened and it was like wait wait the book has to come out and this mm -hmm. and to see how people can learn this and to collaborate with other people in terms of how they would like to use this system mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty much it and just like share share what i have with with the world or with the tarot community and the, the dance community and and see where where that takes me you know and then there's another little you know percolating um thing which i'll um you know mums the word right um, all right maybe after the show about that. yeah <laughs> First, I think I have like a lot here on my my plate to um, be creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is, and there's so much. Uh, just just as, as for this book as a jumping off point, 
uh, too. Um, I'm, you know, I, I enjoyed rereading re it. Um, I, re I read it when it first came in. It's been, you know, finally came out here again, and you know, in its final form. Um, and it's really uh, everything that I would have hoped out of out of it. Hopefully, for, you know, for you too, I'm, I'm really thrilled with it, and I think it's really going to help people to just approach tarot in a different way, and a refreshing way too, and really um, get to just just get to uh, appreciate uh, the tarot in a, in a different way. So too. So now, if people want to, you know, get in touch with you, or are you on social media, or can people, you know, I am you? on social media. Right. So um, on Facebook, Tarot in Motion, or Miriam Jacobs. If there's more Miriam Jacobs, it's from Emeryville. Um, you can mm -hmm. also on Instagram, Tarot in Motion, or you can reach me at my website, PolarityWellness.com, which is a a site that I just put put up. There's still a few glitches, and if people like and they want to sign up on the bottom of that first page, I you know hopefully believe that a um, a um, a structure, a whole like you know kind of guidelines will um, will be their gift. There's a I have other events coming up. You can look at the events there or join the Facebook page, and they'll they'll show up there as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's great. We had a, a lot of nice comments here uh, from during our, our session. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, Miriam, but um, from Mary, uh, <clears throat> from May Kessler and uh, from Stephanie uh, Salford, uh, so too. Uh, so I like Stephanie's idea. I could do a dance with my hands. I could definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start there. How about that? So good. Thank yeah, you. You know, any place that you're comfortable. Okay. I'm comfortable okay. with that. That's good. Right, do some mudras in there, maybe I don't know. We'll, we'll see what uh, happens. <laughs> what I can bring in, but uh, right. three comments there. And uh, boy, thanks so much, Miriam, for being for doing this and ha having the time to to do this. It's it's really great to have spend the time and learn more about this. You know, again, we could have you know many days probably of conversations um, about this book. But um, so thanks for everybody here, also too, who watched and tuned in. It was a lot of fun. So Terra Motion is available. Um, it's available for pre-order right now. If the truck is on the road, it's all going to be here any moment here in our warehouse. And so it is, it is very, very close, but it's available for pre-order at redfeathermbs.com and wherever Mind by Spirit items are sold is going to get there um, as well. And so thanks for everybody who tuned in. Have a beautiful day. And thank you, Miriam, uh, there as well. So bye okay. for now. Okay. Thanks, Chris. You're very welcome. Thank you. Bye.